Hello friends, today we are going to talk about reduced instruction set computers. Uh, there are actually two types of computers. Complex instruction set computers, that is CIS, and reduced instruction set computers. Complex instruction set means one instruction will specify more than one operations okay please try to understand see um uh, and whatever i'm talking about is about machine level languages see um uh, we have discussed about instruction set instruction set is a set of instructions which your processor can execute now uh, when a programmer writes any program what happens is that program is converted into machine level language first and then those instructions will get executed i hope uh, everyone knows that and uh, i'm talking about that instruction set in which the program uh, in high level language gets converted to that instruction set if that instruction set is complex that will be called as complex instruction set computer if that instruction set is reduced then it will be called as reduced instruction set computers okay so complex means one instruction will specify more operations and uh, the number of instructions will be less see in CISC in complex instruction set computer the number of instructions will be less but the time required for decoding one instruction will be a little bit higher as compared to risk okay and in case of risk that is uh, reduced instruction set computers the uh, the instructions will be simple and uh, the number of registers used in processor is going to be larger and uh, that's why it will be a little bit faster than cisc okay and these instructions will be simple so the number of instructions in this case will increase but those instructions will be simpler for decoding okay now let's talk about instruction execution characteristics uh, see, first is uh, operations next is operands then procedure calls and implications operations means what kind of operations uh, the instructions are performing right See, when we are talking about any high level language what's there in any high level languages uh, see these kind of different operations are there in every language and you can see the table um, see these these are the languages and this is the uh, percentage of these types of instructions See, assign instructions are 45 percent in pascal language uh, but in c language there are 38 percent assign instructions assign operations so you can see the percentage in this table see based on this we can decide what kind of instruction set should be used see these pascal c these will be our high level 
languages and uh, these are sign loop call if go to other these are different operations specified in these high level languages and what your computer needs to do is it needs to convert these operations into machine level language so the language in uh, which your computer and your processor understands next next point is operands see uh, when we are talking about any instructions there are going to be different kinds of operands so this is uh, integer constant scalar variable and array or structure these are different types of operands and uh, here you can see the percentage in pascal 16% of integer constant operands can be seen in c 23% of the operands are uh, integer constant Sorry about that. Actually, my key is stuck. So we, you can see the percentage of different kinds of operands here in this table. I will share you the PPT. So you can look at it afterwards. So depending upon this also, the design of uh, instruction set uh, is dependent. Uh, now this, in this diagram, you can see the um, example of call written behavior of a program. So you can see, um, so this is written and this is call. Okay, so, and this is the nesting depth. That means uh, your program starts here. Okay, so it calls a function, then returns, then calls a function, then returns, then in this function another function is called okay so that's why this is called as nesting depth nesting means a function is getting called in another function or a method okay so these calls and returns are related to your functions so mm, See, after looking at this kind of procedure calls, uh, you can see this uh, procedure calls. Uh, what, uh, how many procedure calls will be there? And that is also very important while designing the instruction set. Uh, then, last point is today's last point is implications. see um, what will do to what you are going to think is if you make <clears throat> your instruction set uh, closer to the higher high level language then that would be easier for uh, proceed, uh, processor and uh, that would increase the efficiency of your program but you are wrong. The, that is not a good way. But what should be done is 
uh, HLLs can be best supported by optimizing performance of the most time consuming features of typical HLL programs. So you have to write your program in HLL uh, high level language such that it, uh, its performance is optimized. Then uh, next thing you, what you can do is you can increase the number of registers used in the processor so that you, we can optimize the register usage. Uh, next point is uh, in careful attention needs to be paid to the design of instruction pipelines. Uh, we are going to talk about instruction pipelines in detail in our next chapters. So what, what is needed is a simplified instruction set. So if the instruction set is more simplified, so it's easier for your computer to understand, uh, sorry, decode the instructions. Uh, so if you want to use a large register file, there are two approaches. Uh, first one is software based. It means it requires the use of sophisticated program analysis algorithms. And uh, another approach is hardware based. So hardware based approach is simply to use more registers so that more variables can be held in registers for longer periods of time. So see, I'm, when I'm talking about register, I'm talking about registers in your processor. If we increase the number of registers in the processor, then that will probably um, optimize the performance of your computer. Right? Uh, then uh, another approach is software based. It means it requires the use of sophisticated program analysis algorithms. I mean, in this case, uh, it is analyzed already or predicted already that uh, which kind of variable is going to be used next. And uh, that variable will be already, that uh, data will already be fetched from memory into your pro uh, processor registers. So that kind of uh, analysis is needed in case of software-based approach. And uh, by using that so software-based approach also, the performance of uh, your computer can be optimized. Okay, so I hope you have understood the difference between software-based approach and hardware-based approach. And uh, we'll study our uh, remaining part in our next lecture. Okay, we'll stop here. Thank you.